The Clip Studio Tabmate is a customizable remote control that you can use to enhance your workflow while drawing on a tablet. The Tabmate puts the power of keyboard shortcuts right into your hand. Today, I'll give it a hands-on review, and I'll discuss how it compares to a good old-fashioned keyboard and a similar remote control made by Wacom. Quick disclaimer, this video is not sponsored. The Tabmate was sent to me by one of my patrons at patreon.com slash Aaron Rutten. So the test system that I'm using today is a 16 inch display tablet, but you could use the Tabmate with a non-display tablet as well. Throughout this review, I'll show you the process of a demonstration painting I created using the Tabmate. So the features of the Tabmate are pretty basic. It's a Bluetooth wireless remote that's optimized for Clip Studio Paint. This remote is covered in buttons of various shapes and sizes, and these buttons can be configured to perform all sorts of shortcuts and commands inside of Clip Studio Paint. You can also set this remote to four different modes so you can have four separate configurations of buttons. There's a scroll wheel, which you can move up and down. You could use that to zoom in or zoom out, or you could resize your brush larger or smaller. You can also press the scroll wheel down and it functions as a button. Beneath that, we have the A, B, C, and D buttons. These are just circular buttons that you can press. Beneath that, we have a ring of four buttons. It looks kind of like a D-pad if you're used to playing video games. There's an up, down, left, and right button. And in the center of that ring is the Q button. This pops open a little quick panel on screen. On the top of the remote, there are two top buttons. One of the buttons has a little nipple on it so that you know that it's the top button. On the back side of the tab mate is the trigger button. This enters phaser mode and you can use this to take down giant space moths. Or you could use it to switch to your eraser. And then on the bottom of the tab mate is the clip studio button. We'll talk about what pressing this button will do in just a bit but when we press it, it changes the color of the LED at the top of the Tabmate. If we return to the back of the Tabmate, there is a battery compartment on the bottom as well. This cover just slides off and you can access the battery compartment. So what are some of the advantages to using a remote control like this when you're doing digital drawing or painting? First, it can make it easier to find commands. You don't have to hunt around for a little button or something in a menu. If you program that function to one of the keys on the Tabmate, all you have to do is press that button and remember where that button is located, and of course which command is associated with that button. But that can be a lot easier to remember than complex keyboard shortcuts. Depending on how you work, the Tabmate also might be more ergonomic. If it's more comfortable for you to use a remote than a keyboard, then there definitely could be an advantage to using the Tabmate. Some artists might also find that the buttons on the Tabmate are easier to press than buttons on a keyboard, or even express keys on a tablet. The Tabmate is also ambidextrous, so it works just the same whether you're right-handed or left-handed. So the Tabmate is actually pretty easy to set up. You can follow the instructions on Clip Studio's website, but basically you can hold the Clip Studio button to then pair the device with your computer if it supports Bluetooth. And then once the Tabmate is paired with your computer, then you can go into Clip Studio Paint and you can set up the shortcut buttons to do whatever you like. I've gone ahead and just selected this blue mode here because I think that covers most of my needs. I think all I modified was changing that bottom D-pad button to sample color. I didn't need a button for panning since I can use touch on my device to pan my page around and zoom in and zoom out. Now I'd like to share how it felt to use the Tabmate in my workflow, but first I'd like to add some context to my review because I'm used to working with a keyboard and the only other remote I've used is the Wacom Express Key Remote. So I think it might be useful to share some comparisons between the two devices to see the pros and cons of each. So first we'll start with the price. The Tabmate is cheaper at around $53. The Wacom Express Key Remote is $99. As far as compatibility, both devices support Windows and Mac operating systems. If we move on to the size, the Express Key Remote is longer and wider than the Tabmate. The form of the Express Key Remote is flat and thin with edges that are sort of hard. The Tabmate in comparison is smooth and contours to your hand. Now let's move on to the weight of the two devices. The Express Key Remote is about 75% heavier than the Tabmate. The Tabmate is quite light and most of the weight comes from the AA battery. Although the Express Key Remote is heavier, it feels less likely to be damaged. If we take a look at the materials, both devices have a slightly grippy plastic. The Tabmate is nearly all plastic except for the rubbery scroll wheel. The Express Key Remote has a metal frame with plastic buttons and a rubbery backside. Now let's take a look at the number of buttons on each device. The Tabmate has 14 buttons, if we're counting the scroll wheel as a button. And then of course there's the scroll wheel, which you can move up or down. 
The Wacom Express Key Remote has 17 buttons, but instead of a scroll wheel, it has a touch sensitive ring. This touch sensitive ring has three different modes. So for example, you could have the touch ring zoom in and zoom out. You could press the button to alternate to the next mode and you could resize your brush and so on. The tab mate of course also has modes, but we'll come back to that in just a bit. As far as the button layout goes, the tab mate actually feels better in my hand than the Wacom Express Key Remote, and it's easier to reach all of the buttons. Now let's discuss versatility. The Wacom Express Key Remote can be used with any application, and it's easily customizable. You can choose settings for all applications or for specific applications, and the remote will automatically change its functions when you change to a different application. The TabMate, on the other hand, can only be used with Clip Studio by default, but it has better integration with the Clip Studio tools and commands. The word on the street is that you can use Auto Hotkey to extend the TabMate to be compatible with other apps, and I've also seen that some apps like Expressy are able to recognize the TabMate as a Bluetooth game controller. I'll discuss using the TabMate with other applications in more detail in just a bit. Now earlier I mentioned that both of these devices have preset modes, the TabMate has multiple modes for Clip Studio Paint. It has four modes total, so you can have four different configurations of buttons. All you have to do to switch between these different modes is hit the Clip Studio Paint button. The Wacom Express Key Remote does not offer multiple preset modes for a single application, but you could save and load preset files to get basically the same effect. Now let's talk about the sensitivity of these devices. The buttons on both devices respond nicely. The touch ring on the Express Key Remote is a little bit sensitive, but you can adjust that. There is no sensitivity adjustment available for the TabMate scroll wheel, but it performs as you might expect a scroll wheel to perform on a mouse. Now let's move on to docking. The Wacom Express Key Remote can magnetically dock onto the Cintiq 27 QHD and the Cintiq Pro 24 and 32. The TabMate cannot dock, but it can easily be laid on one of its flat sides without rolling away. As far as the battery type on these devices, the TabMate uses one AA battery. You could of course get a rechargeable AA battery. The Wacom Express Key Remote has an internal rechargeable lithium battery. You simply charge it via USB cable. And as far as I know, the battery in the Express Key Remote is not replaceable. Both the TabMate and the Wacom Express Key Remote are wireless devices. The TabMate uses Bluetooth. The Wacom Express Key Remote uses a proprietary USB receiver. So those are some comparisons between the TabMate and the Wacom Express Key Remote. With those comparisons in mind, I'm going to share some pros and cons of using the TabMate from my own perspective. So let's start with the pros. The TabMate actually did improve my workflow efficiency in Clip Studio Paint. I haven't used Clip Studio Paint a ton, so it actually felt easier to adjust to working in a different application than I'm used to because I didn't have to hunt for frequently used tools and commands. I did not find it difficult to memorize the button layout, and I could remember the shortcuts the next day after only one painting session. And I was able to use the phaser button to take out a giant space bug. And now for some cons. Despite having most of the tools and shortcuts accessible on the TabMate, I still needed a keyboard to label layers. To be fair, I could have used the touchscreen keyboard on this tablet, but I prefer not to. My next gripe is that I had a difficult time being comfortable working with the TabMate on a 16 inch display tablet. At the beginning of the session, I felt like I was really getting in a groove and it felt good to do most of my work with only the pen and the tab mate, but near the end of the session I felt really fatigued. I couldn't quite find a posture I liked, and having to hold two objects caused some strain on my body as well. Having to hold the remote at all times is cumbersome. That goes for the tab mate, the Wacom Express Key Remote, or any handheld shortcut controller. I appreciate being able to dock the Wacom Express Key Remote magnetically to the side of my Cintiq, so it just kind of felt awkward holding something in both hands the entire time I was working. Until now, I guess I just didn't realize how much I like having a free hand. And if I do have to use a remote in my workflow, it's nice to have an elegant way of docking it. And you know what? The keyboard is also not a bad device for shortcuts. So even with something that's contoured to my hand and set up with easily memorable buttons, I still want to use a keyboard. So the only scenario I can see where I might actually prefer the TabMate is when I'm working on a mobile tablet that doesn't have express keys and I don't have access to or don't want to use a keyboard and I only want to paint with Clip Studio Paint. Yeah, that sounds absurd to me too, but there are a lot of artists out there who fall into that category. So the TabMate could be a good option for them. I'd love to have tested the TabMate with some other art apps. It might have even been cool for video editing, but I can't. 
Now, of course, I've heard that you can use Auto Hotkey to program this device to be compatible with keyboard shortcuts in other applications, but it looked like a lot more work than I wanted to invest in getting it going. Coming from the Wacom Express Key Remote, it just feels wrong to have to hack a device to make it compatible with more than one application. I think adding a separate control panel to set shortcuts for other apps would really add a lot of value to this product. Not being able to recommend this to anyone other than a Clip Studio Paint user really holds the TabMate back, in my opinion. If you enjoyed my review of the Clip Studio TabMate, make sure to check out some of my other reviews of products for digital artists, and click that subscribe button to get my latest videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.